What's going on guys, Carmine here, and uh, we just got news a couple hours ago that Dave and Dan were supposedly fired, or stepped down, quote-unquote, from their Star Wars trilogy that was uh, given to them by Disney and Lucasfilms. And uh, a lot of people are celebrating this, and yeah, I understand why you would be, you know, because Game of Thrones Season 8 was not that great, it was clearly rushed, they clearly wanted to get the hell out of the whole Game of Thrones train and move on to something else, and that's why a lot of people think the last season was trash, um, because they wanted to jump on the Star Wars train and leave behind the Game of Thrones train, very messy and uh, disheveled and all that, and um, yeah, that's why some people think season 8 was trash. Uh, before we begin further on, this is kind of, you know, off the cuff, I don't have a script for this, I just wanted to get my thoughts out, so try to listen to this kind of like a podcast while you do something else. So... Here's why I'm a little worried. Now, sure, celebrate Dave and Dan, you hate them, blah, 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 and yeah, okay, fine. But I'm also a Star Wars fan, and this kind of speaks volumes about what's happening with Star Wars and the state of that company right now. Because if you think about it, Dave and Dan left this trilogy to go do stuff with Netflix, and Netflix offered them a shit ton of money. I heard it was like an eight to nine figure deal for, for both of them to do something with Netflix. Now, that's a lot of fucking peanuts. However, at the same time, who in their right mind would leave Disney for Netflix? Think about that for a minute. I had a buddy of mine who did some very small work for Disney. Super, super, super small work for Disney. Very small. In fact, he wasn't even on the bottom of the totem pole. He was just not, even non-existent on the totem pole at all. And he got so much benefits, so much money. They throw money at you for just showing up and doing nothing. In fact, if you can somehow manage to find a way to sneak on a Disney set, you'll just get a bunch of like dental and health benefits and just money thrown at you just for being there. So there's no... And I, and, and I doubt Netflix does any of that. Nobody in their right mind would leave Disney for Netflix. Netflix has nothing in their catalog that can compete with the blockbuster titles that Disney has under its belt. Yet Dave and Dan in my f strong belief, quit. And here's why. Let's be clear here. Dave and Dan don't have anything under their belts in terms of directing, with the exception of Game of Thrones, which there was a recent panel they did and someone was attending and they tweeted out all the answers where Dave and Dan were literally like fucking clueless. And it's an actual miracle that the first season of Game of Thrones even came out at all. I'll leave a link in the description below. Um, I'll talk about that later in a future episode of the podcast. But... More on this, um, here's why I think Dave and Dan quit. Kathleen Kennedy, who is the boss of Lucasfilms and everything Star Wars right now, is a bad boss. Now, the reason I say that is not because she's a female. A lot of social justice worries and feminists, you know, have railed against people who have criticized Kathleen Kennedy before, and they love to say that, you know, people are criticizing her because she's a female and, you know, she runs your favorite franchise. That's not true. Nobody cares that Kathleen Kennedy is a female. People care that she has made bad decisions, which she has. The proof is right there. So why would Dave and Dan quit because of Kathleen Kennedy? Well, first and foremost, let me just make this very clear. In the past five, to five years, five years, Star Wars has replaced... Five directors, Gareth Edwards with Rogue One, Lord Miller on Solo, Josh Trank with Boba Fett, Colin Trevorrow with Episode Nine, and now Dave and Dan. Five, or six, I guess, because Dave and Dan, but I'm counting them together. Now, let's, let's think about this for a minute. First off, let's talk about Gareth Edwards. Uh, Gareth Edwards was chosen to do a Star Wars film. Now, Star Wars is a big property, once again. Before... <laughs> Before Gareth, Gareth Edwards was even chosen to do Rogue One, the only thing he had ever done was Monsters. Which I saw, it was a short film. It wasn't bad, actually. I really enjoyed it. But before that, he I think he did Godzilla. But he was working on um, Rogue One way before Godzilla even came out. So Lucasfilms had no idea if he would you know do good or not. But regardless, they still tapped this guy to do Star Wars Rogue One when all he had done was like kind of like a short film. I, oh, oh okay. I, I don't know why you would do that, but okay, moving on. Uh, the other guy on here, Josh Trank. Josh Trank, with the exception of Fantastic Four, once again, Disney and Lucasfilm chose these guys way before For Force Awakens even came out. That was their plan, remember that. They wanted a Star Wars film every freaking year, so they had to pick these directors ahead of time. Um, they had J.J. for, you know, Force Awakens, and then they needed to pick guys for that. So, 
The only thing that Josh Trank even did before he was tapped to do a Boba Fett film was Chronicle. And the only reason he didn't end up doing the Boba Fett film is because Fantastic Four flopped. But they didn't know that back then. So they were picking these guys that had not, no major directorial debut under their belt. You know, they, these guys that had no experience with a big budget film, let alone a huge franchise like this. And they're putting it all on these, I don't want to call them amateurs, but close to it. And who else? Colin Trevorrow. Once again, they picked Colin before Jurassic World even came out. So before Jurassic World even came out, what did he even do? A couple of short films and safety not guaranteed. Once again, these guys have no major experience under their belt with a huge franchise, yet this big-ass company is picking all these, you know, guys that have almost no experience to do this stuff. Why? Well, probably for the same reason they chose Dave and Dan, because Dave and Dan also don't have much experience outside of Game of Thrones. And why would they do that? Well, because it's all about control and budget. That's essentially it. And these guys with no experience under their belt, who are essentially amateurs in a sense, they're easy to push around and control. Kathleen Kennedy has had almost public arguments with J.J. Abrams because... He's not an amateur, like, he knows what he's doing, and he wants somewhat of a creative control over his films, and she just can't let that happen. It's essentially on her constantly coming in and, and you know, trying to push these guys around. When Lord and Miller were, like, essentially 90% finished with uh, Solo, she came in, saw what it was, didn't like it, and had them fired and brought in Ron Howard, someone with actual experience, to finish out the movie and edge it out the way she wanted it to, to be done. And, and it's kind of funny, you've seen this multiple times. John Favreau, he absolutely hated Iron Man 2, and he talked about like how with the second one, they essentially had everything already picked out for him, and all he had to do was just come in and do the job. Now granted, directing a film is not about just coming in and doing the job. You kind of always, you know, put a bit of your heart and soul into it a little bit, and that's not what these companies want. They just want someone to just fill in the job role and then just do as they're told. Not a lot of people like that. Dave and Dan have enough clout, I guess, from the earlier seasons of Thrones, because these last couple of ones were... <clears throat> Dave and Dan have enough clout and creative freedom... Not creative freedom. They have enough freedom in general to pick and choose their projects. That's the ultimate goal in Hollywood, whether you're a director or an actor, to have the freedom to do whatever it is you want. And Netflix is able to give them that. And that's why I firmly think that they quit the Star Wars trilogy, because they knew that it wouldn't be truly their baby, truly their films. It would be tainted by the studios and Kathleen Kennedy constantly trying to vie for control over what they should do, rather than them, them doing whatever it is they want to do. And that's a shame, too, because I firmly believe, along with other people, that... They rushed out Game of Thrones so they could go work on Star Wars. Like, a lot of people believe that. A lot of people, you know, think that's what happened. And it's a shame that Game of Thrones had to die for something that they were ultimately going to end up quitting in the first place. I mean, that's incredibly sad. Game of Thrones made them a household name almost. And, yeah, they had to rush it out so they can go off and do whatever the hell it is they want. Which I kind of understand, in a way. Once you do something for, like, the last ten years... And you have enough like of a reputation where you can do anything else and companies are vying and bidding on you to come over to their side. Because I remember there being like somewhat of a bidding war between Amazon, Netflix, and Apple TV, I believe, uh, trying to get Dave and Dan over to them. This was a couple of years ago, I, I'm assuming, but Dave and Dan ultimately chose to do something with Netflix because Netflix can give them a lot of creative freedom. And that's what they want right now. They have the money from Thrones. And, yeah, they can just, just do whatever that is they want. They can pick and choose, and they chose Netflix over Star Wars, over Disney, because of that freedom. But, yeah, to, to wrap this up, because I've just been ranting and stumbling over my words here and there, um, to wrap it up, I don't think Dave and Dan were fired. I think they just stepped down and quit because they knew that Star Wars is in a very weird position right now. It really is. I think I think it was today or yesterday, Lawrence Lawrence Kasdan came out and, and like said that Disney blew it with Solo. And they're kind of right. Star Wars is going downhill for a little bit. With the exception of the comics, the video games have been kind of doing not that great. Um, you know, uh, the books are doing okay. The merchandising is not selling. The sequel era stuff is, is just not selling as well as they'd hoped. 
Um, you know, the television shows, with the exception of the of, of Clone Wars, which is coming back, I'm excited for. Rebels was okay, but the new Resistance show, not that great. Nobody really cares about it. Um, the movies, whether or not you liked Last Jedi doesn't matter, because the amount of people who hated it or are very meh with it um, outnumber the people that liked it. Not to mention, Solo underperformed at a budget of $300 million, and it barely made $400 million. In order for a movie to be considered successful, it has to make twice its budget. Solo couldn't even manage that. That's why I always laugh when people are saying, make Solo 2 happen. Why? Why do you care about Solo? Like, Han, please, leave Han Solo alone. Just let the character be, like, awesome. Stop giving me more backstory that we don't really need on these fucking characters. Please, leave that alone. The fandom was crying for the longest time for an Obi-Wan film, and they're finally giving us that in, in a television show. Fucking fantastic. Nobody cared about Solo. Nobody wanted Solo. If you wanted Solo, fantastic. But you know what? If everybody, if the entire fandom wanted a Han Solo film, then why the hell didn't it do good at the box office? Exactly. So, I don't know. Last couple of years of Star Wars film have just been either very mediocre or just didn't perform well, and it's in a very tight spot right now. So, we'll just have to see what happens, but I think Dave and Dan really did dodge a bullet here. Star Wars is a ship that's being very uh, mishandled right now, and uh, yeah, I, I was actually genuinely curious to see what Dave and Dan would have done with Star Wars, because once again... The first four, four to five seasons of Thrones were actually good. I actually really enjoyed it. And uh, that was with material they already had on board. This is Star Wars. They can do whatever it is they want, and they have material to pull from from Legends. So if Dave and Dan are amazing at working with what's already on paper and adapting it, imagine what they could have done with Star Wars in like, the expanded universe that's you know been left behind and labeled Legends. That is no longer canon. Like They could do a shit ton. Uh, with the exception of, you know, rape scenes, of course, you know, Star Wars, but, yeah, I was actually very curious to see what they would have done, and, uh, oh well, we'll just have to see what they do next for Netflix, I'm, I'm really not going to see anything they, they try to do on Netflix, I, when it comes to Dave and Dan, they're, like I said, they're adequate at adapting, but when it comes to doing their own stuff, well, we saw what happened with season six, seven, and eight, so I'll leave it at that. But guys, let me know your thoughts on the whole thing. Leave it down below, and I'll uh, see you guys next time. Have a good one.